The next interview is with Dr. Andreas Einfeld. Dr. Einfeld is a Swedish physician specializing in family medicine, and he's the founder and CEO of Diet Doctor, helping it grow from a local Swedish blog, Kostoktorn, up to the largest low-carb and keto website in the world. And throughout this, his time as CEO, growing this company and growing the message, he, he has been hyper-focused on helping people make healthy weight loss simple, making low carb and keto easy for people to implement to dramatically change their lives. And now helping give other options with higher amounts of protein to see if that's even a better option for them. So let's hear what Dr. Einfeld has to say about the role of high protein in this whole concept of healthy weight loss. Well, Andreas, it's a pleasure to be able to sit down and talk to you on our own Diet Doctor podcast. Now, today specifically, we're sort of talking about this issue of protein. And Diet Doctor has started creating more content geared towards higher protein diet. So I wanted to get your impression. What is sort of the motivation behind this that, inc- that, that inspired you to do this? Well, I guess, you know, it's the whole team. Uh, but I think that, you know, what we try to do is we're trying to empower people to improve their health. And it's not really about, you know, low carb necessarily. It's about what works, right? And I think the thing that makes me quite interested in, in higher protein diets is that uh, more and more, there's more and more scientific support to, to say that that may be a really powerful intervention that's really helpful for a lot of people. And then it becomes really interesting to explore that, you know, what does the science say? What are people's experiences? What do people enjoy? And what are, are the results that they get? And if this is uh, something really powerful for a lot of people, then can we develop quality content and tools that help people do it in a simpler way with a better result, then that's the win for everybody, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good way to say it. Now, of course, whenever you talk about high protein, people are going to have different perceptions of what that means. And some people are going to think of, you know, bodybuilders in the gym chugging whey protein shakes and eating six meals of chicken breasts all day long. So, I mean, what do you have in your mind when you think of high protein for the general public to help with metabolic health and weight loss? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it is really interesting. And we're, we're working with this now with, you know, you and, and Dr. Ted Nyman and other people, but trying to make these helpful vis- visualizations about what does it mean and what kind of foods are we talking about? Uh, like you said, chicken breasts, skinless uh, and broccoli and whey protein and egg whites. That's at the very extreme end of, of the ultra high protein levels. And, and, and I think that is something that mostly interests fitness people who have this sort of, well, maybe they're body, bodybuilders or they want to win fitness competitions. It's not really, I think, something that most people would want to do long term. So w- when I'm talking about or when we're talking about high protein, sure, that, that is an ultra high protein alternative for people who want it. But there are many, many options that are more kind of uh, uh, attractive, I think, for, for normal people. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. And, and I think a lot of the content that, that we're creating is going to address that in a very user-friendly way. I mean, things like, you know, ribeye or, or, or eggs or, or just vegetables or, or, or even beans that are high in protein, uh, you know, dairy, cheese, all kinds of things, uh, certainly fish and seafood. There are many, many great options to eat that, you know, can be made super tasty. Right, right. Now, before we get too much into the protein, which we'll certainly talk about more, one of the things I really like about working with you is you you like to take a step back and see things from the sort of the first order perspectives, which is really important from either a scientific perspective or a business perspective. And one of the things that you brought up was the first order principle of why we eat, which I thought was so interesting because it's something most people just take for granted. You just eat. You don't even think about why you eat. So when you did this sort of deeper dive on the first order principle of why we eat, what did you come up with? Yeah, I think for for tricky things, uh, thinking from first principles can be really powerful. I mean, it's it's quite, you know, time consuming, but but it's worth it for for, you know, when we're talking about these kind of fundamental things. So uh, why we eat? Yeah, well, 
I think there are two reasons why any animal would eat, and and that is you need nutrients to build your body, and then you need energy to to run it. In a way, you could say it's it's materials to you know uh, build the machine or the car, whatever, and then they, there is the fuel to run it, right? So. I think that's fundamentally why why we eat. That's what we need to eat for those two things. We need we need the building blocks to build our bodies, repair them, uh, grow them as needed, and then we need the 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 fuel to to walk around, to think, to to have all these processes in our bodies work, right? Yeah. And uh, then you can ask, okay, what what is that? Uh, what what is the uh, nutrients of what is the the fuel and and for nutrients we know it, it it is basically the essential nutrients right and then we have protein which is sort of the big the big piece of that then you have essential fatty acids uh, minerals and vitamins and then for for fuel you have primarily uh carbs and fat and uh, sure you can to some extent you can you can uh, use protein as fuel or alcohol but but most of it is going to be uh, carbs and fat. And looking at the nutrient part of it, then the interesting thing is that protein really is the big thing there. Uh, if you look at the amounts, probably, you know, three quarters of the essential nutrients you need every day measured in grams is, is protein. A little bit of fatty acids, even even less uh, minerals, and very very tiny amounts uh, of vitamins. And the, the really fascinating thing, especially Ted Nyman, who, who uh, Dr. Nyman, who who brought this to my attention. But if you focus on eating high protein foods, like meat, fish, vegetables, etc., you tend to get all the other minor things in the same package. So if you po- focus on on a high protein diet and you eat real whole foods, you actually tend to get all of the essential nutrients that a human needs in the same foods. So I think that's super interesting. Yeah, it's this concept that nature knew what it was doing. Nature knew what to provide uh-huh, yeah. for, for people to, to get what they needed. It's also this super interesting idea of, of, of protein leverage and, you know, the way that our modern f- food supply, uh, sort of industrial food supply, sort of dilutes the nutrition in the food by, you know, first, of course, agriculture with a lot of uh, carbohydrates, but more recently, refined carbs, refined fats, added, you know, oils, sugar, flour. This is kind of, in a way, um, as it's often called, you know, empty calories, right? Mm-hmm. There's no nutrition in sugar. There's no nutrition in soybean oil or uh, flour. Basically, you know, refined white flour is almost all starch, almost nothing else. Okay, a little bit of protein, but but not a lot, right? Right. Uh, so you basically dilute the protein and the, uh, the nutrients by adding that into the processed sort of ultra processed food supply. And what, what happens is that people have to eat more, to get the same amount of nutrition. And there's been a lot of studies on this in animals and also in humans saying that, you know, if you dilute the protein, people eat more energy until they get the protein that they absolutely need. And that's what's called uh, protein leverage. And it could explain uh, part of the obesity epidemic. And then you look back and say, okay, hunter-gatherer is what, you know, our ancestors, what did they eat? What are we genetically adapted to? Maybe they ate 30% protein on average. And now we're down to, you know, 12, 13, 14%. You basically have to eat two to three times more energy to get the same nutrition as our ancestors got, right? Well, that could explain a lot. Right. So that brings us sort of to the, the, the modern times and the dilemma that, w- that we're in from a, a worldwide health perspective of this obesity epidemic. So one of the things that higher protein diets have been shown to do is to help with weight loss. But as we know, not all weight loss is the same. You can lose fat mass, you can lose lean body mass, and you can lose in healthy ways or unhealthy ways. So 
when it comes to this concept of healthy weight loss, what are the factors that you think are most important? And as a follow-up then, and how does protein fit into achieving those concepts of healthy weight loss? One fundamental thing um, is that in order to achieve weight loss in a sustainable, enjoyable way, you have to uh, feel satiety. You, you can't be hungry all the time. Nobody wants to be hungry all the time. And nobody, uh, I think, well, almost nobody is able to do that. I know I wouldn't be yeah. able to do that. So in order to achieve weight loss, you really have to focus on eating foods that bring you a lot of satiety with not a lot of uh, empty calories, not a lot of basically a high satiety value per calorie, mm -hmm. if you will. Tying that back to protein, that tends to be high protein foods uh, in general. That is, uh, you know, protein is the most satiating macronutrient, more so than carbohydrates, more so than fat. And it also comes with all these other nutrients, uh, usually. So then you can eat less food and still be, uh, still feel full, still feel happy about it. Uh, another bonus is, uh, which is also important, I think, for sustainable, healthy weight loss is you want to lose uh, fat mass, perhaps excess fat mass, but you want to maintain uh, the lean mass, the muscle mass, the bone mass. You need all these nutrients to, in, in, you know, your internal organs and, and everything. And that's what you get also with the pro high protein foods and the high nutrition foods. I think it fits together quite well. Other other aspects of, of healthy weight loss, of course, is you know you want to be metabolically healthy. You want to have a you know good good health markers, blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol profile, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if you go on a higher protein diet that is uh, doesn't have excessive amounts of, of carbohydrates or, or or added fats, then uh, that tends to be helpful for that as well. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. The 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 sort of the different layers. One is is satiety, like you said, because any diet, even if you're eating, you know, getting adequate protein, if you're overeating carbs, overeating fat, overeating calories, then all of a sudden the high the high benefits of high protein diet are basically going to go away because of caloric excess. But because of the satiety, it's more difficult to do. And then you also can get metabolic benefits of studies have shown better insulin sensitivity and glucose regulation. So there, there are all these benefits to eating higher protein diets, yet we hear a lot of concerns about higher protein diets from, you could say, the longevity community or longevity experts that too much protein is connected with decreased longevity or lower lifespans, shorter lifespans. So how do you sort of combine those two to say, well, on the one hand, we see these benefits, but on the other hand, these are, there are these longevity concerns? Yeah, I think that uh, that is a super interesting topic uh, to discuss. I think, uh, well, first of all, I guess we don't really have high quality data, certainly not in in humans, uh, to say whether this is actually uh, correct or not. But I, I guess what uh, what people who are really interested in longevity uh, think about is that protein tends to stimulate this uh, nutrient sensor called mTOR in the in the cells and stimulate uh, cell division. And you know, if you sort of which makes sense, you know, because it's 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 building blocks for for building cells, um, and if you stimulate that too much, you get more cell division, and that would theoretically perhaps uh, speed up um, aging and the risk of of cancer and other things you certainly don't want. Okay. I think one one uh, one thing that sort of points in the other direction is, well, this nutrient sensor, this mTOR. And this sort of cell division is also very much affected by the available energy. So if you eat a higher protein diet, but that leads to eating less energy, then you get the opposite effect from that factor, right? You eat less energy, you have less stimulation through that pathway. So those things kind of pull in, in, uh, in opposite directions. And, and what's the end result? Well, it's, you know, it's very hard to tease out. Another factor is that it depends on what you what you eat a high protein diet for. Let's say you you, you uh, go on a higher protein diet because you want to lose weight, uh, you want to reverse perhaps type two diabetes, etc. We know that those health conditions lead to accelerated aging, 
like if you have type 2 diabetes or obesity, then you have a, a quite a lot of increased risk of cancer, of heart disease, of Alzheimer's, etc. In a way, it's like it's an accelerated aging because all of these common sort of diseases of aging come, come sooner. And, and what you have is sort of a situation where you have too much energy, you're taking in too much energy into the body, too much stimulation uh, for, for these pathways. So in one way, you're reversing that. If you go on a high protein diet, you eat less. Now you're losing weight. Now you're re reducing your blood sugar. Now you're getting away from this situation where you're overstimulating these these nutrient sensors. So, yeah, it's it's hard to know what the what the end result is, but but it seems to me that at least if you're if you're fixing things like you're losing weight, you're normalizing your blood pressure, you're normalizing your blood sugar. Now you're getting away from a from a sort of a, a state where where you have an increased risk of many diseases. Uh, in a way, it's an accelerated aging then. That's, that should be a good thing.